And welcome to another show of Sports Talk for You. My name is Aaron Bell. I am your host. We have my co-host Adam Parker, Armand Ely, and we finally, finally have Chris Anderson joining us. He's been busy with his principal work and <laughs> all this COVID-19 going on. Chris, nice of you to join us. Thank you. We find we got Chase Gibson with us again with his uh, little Florida Hawaiian background there on the beach. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. You know what can I say? It's COVID-19 and can't <laughs> can't wait to hang out on the beach and uh, catch some waves. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, we had an exciting weekend of the NFL draft. We know Mr. Anderson is kind of disappointed with his Raiders in that first round, picking up our net <laughs> instead of going with another person. The Chiefs had about a B-plus. A grade Washington Redskins had a hell of a draft. They got some dang good players. They made, that, T-T-R. they made that big trade to send Trent Williams and then got that extra round pick. Chiefs had a good draft. They just lost their punter, Cole Quit. They released him, but they also got another punter who apparently can punt 80 yard footballs. So that'll work out. <laughs> so, boys, let's go ahead and get into the conversation. Are you guys happy with your teams? Chris, we'll start with you. How do you feel about the Raiders draft? Uh, for me, I am a Raiders fan. I mean, I, I'm happy. I, they went into the draft, and you knew that they needed a receiver. And I, I would rather have had Judy. That's who my favorite was. But in true Al Davis fashion, and then to honor him, can just flat fly. <laughs> And um, reading a lot of it, I, Mayock and Gruden, I thought last year I was kind of surprised, and then both guys in the first round ended up doing real well. So I'm going to hold super crabbiness, but they definitely, definitely addressed the receiver position, which was a mega weakness last year. So that's kind of my my Raiders' thoughts. Well, yeah, let's, talk about, you... let's go ahead and talk about these Washington Redskins. Uh, as far as the Redskins draft, I loved, loved the draft. Chase Young was the obvious first pick in, the, in that draft. And basically what the Redskins did was address needs all across the board. D'Antonio Gibson running back uh, you know, for their, for their second pick. And saw an article in the Washington Post or one of the uh, Redskins deals that, you know, there's a possibility that Adrian Peterson could get cut before 20 20- the 2020 season, so Antonio Gordon, Antonio Gibson, great pick, great senior pick. Uh, address other teams like the you know, the offensive line, the kid out of LSU, and and St. Eagles State, Keith Ishmael. The only thing that you know disappointed me with the draft with the Redskins was they didn't address they didn't address the need for a tight end. Uh, Jordan Reed is obviously done. Vernon Davis is done. The only ones they have is uh, my boy Jeremy Sprinkle and uh, mm-hmm. former uh, quarterback for Virginia Tech, Pokey, is Logan Thomas. So those are the only two titles that they have. So, and I just that's the only thing I wish they had addressed. But other than that, that was a great draft by the Redskins. Now we, you know what's funny? Yeah, we oh, know sorry. that uh, Adam could not be any happier with the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> stealing C.D. Lamb from the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I'd like to uh, personally, I mean, I can't send out a uh, thank you note or anything, but uh, I figure Chris will take the thank you for me. But <laughs> it all really stemmed on what the Raiders were going to do. Um, and the fact they went rugs, and then I believe the obvious choice for the Broncos was Judy. But <laughs> I've been wanting Lamb since he was uh, coming out of the college. So, anyway, I was ecstatic that we did not uh, blow it this time like we did with Randy Moss way back when. So, anyway, but just going down, you know, getting digs and then the uh, defensive tackle out of Oklahoma, who is one of the fastest big boys I've ever seen at six foot, 325, ran the 40 at like an insane what like four seven four eight like it, the guy could flat out move and then uh, we got ourselves a nice little center there from wisconsin to represent uh frederick who retired and the only uh question i had was that random uh quarterback we picked 
picked up <laughs> in the seventh. So whatever, but you know what? That aside, I thought it was an A plus draft. Now you say that about the quarterback, but wasn't a wasn't Tom Brady a six round pick? Yes, like yes. ninety nine or two thousand, whatever it was. I'm yeah. telling you, Tony Romo was undrafted. These quarterbacks true. come out of nowhere, man. That's mm-hmm. one position that quarterbacks will come out of nowhere. Yeah, but it's just it's just funny kind of hearing some of uh, the uh, guys that I watch on uh, Cowboy stuff, and none of them, all of them were like, yep, did not have tape on that guy, so don't even ask me who he is. <laughs> so, so I guess uh, McCarthy saw something in him that they all didn't. So it will be an interesting wait and see how he does. So yeah. now, Chase, but I'm excited to too. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to end with this. I'm going to – I'm just excited for the season and actually excited for the Chiefs getting that uh, bowling ball of a running back. So, I'll let you guys describe him. So, take it away. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about these Kansas City Chiefs. Pretty excited uh, about the draft that they had uh, this past week in uh, – you know, C-H-E, I can't wait to watch because this guy reminds me a lot of Priest Holmes. Uh, he has a little Brian Westbrook in him, uh, definitely Mark Ingram. He's a hybrid, so I don't think there's one player that you can contribute to. Maybe a little Maurice Jones-Drew, you know, I think those all kind of go along with what he brings to the table. Do you, but think, he'll, do you think he'll start over Damian Williams? I don't think that he'll start right now over Damian <laughs> Williams. I think he's a, a second-year uh, start, but I, I do think he's going to come in and contribute. I mean, look at what this offense can do. You got Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, and then you're bringing a guy like this in that can either do a wildcat formation or he can come in and stretch the field. That's what Kansas City does best is stretch the field. And I can't wait to watch this guy because, I mean, I, I went back and I watched this guy doesn't fumble as much as the other guys. He doesn't drop passes, and he just flat runs through people. And then, he'll, you know, one play he'll get stopped, but the next play he'll make an 80-yard gain. So, I mean, can't wait to watch this guy play. But uh, next round, you know, they got uh, uh, the um, linebacker Gay, who had the second yes. fastest 40 time uh, coming out of college. So, I can't wait to have him on defense. And uh, it's only issues. Fun. Well, His only issues are those off-field issues, but that's where yeah, Tyrone those got kind of Frank Clark will step in and help him out. Yeah, those got kind of cleared up, but there was a misunderstanding uh, about the practice, him knocking out a quarterback, and it it, it didn't go into depth like that of what I heard from their coach. So, uh, but he brings speed to the defense. Uh, then you got a guy coming from TCU, offensive tackle that didn't allow a sack in his entire career at TCU. So can't wait to watch him, and then. Uh, Getting back into the draft, uh, draft a hybrid safety corner. Uh, so I think he'll be great. Uh, sad to see uh, Dustin Colquitt go today. Uh, he had a great tenure in Kansas City. But this new kid, Townsend, I can't wait to watch this kid. This guy returned. I mean, he has a punt re- uh, punt uh, fake and then runs for the first down. And has an 80-yard bomb. He was the t- top-ranked uh, kicker, punter coming out. So, and there's other couple of guys that they could have in for competition, but what an exciting time for football. Uh, the highest ranked NFL draft uh, in history uh, from the COVID-19, obviously, but it, it's exciting times. Yeah. Now, now you don't want to see your, 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 your uh, punter all the time. If you see your punter all the time, it means the office is not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Hey, I got something to say real quick. I was able to uh, see the video of when the GMs and coaches call the players and uh, tell them that they've been drafted. And I thought one of the coolest things was when Andy Reid called your guys as running back. And he flat out told them, you know who who picked you, right? It was Mahomes. We gave him a couple players' names, and he said he wanted you. So welcome to the team. Which, if I may add, is a far cry from what Green Bay did and how they <laughs> screwed Aaron Rodgers. So, anyway, well done, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Well, to go one more thing to go along with what you said, Adam, I think Andy Reid and Brett Breach, they did a great job of getting the guy they wanted. Uh, but to go along with that, they asked their quarterback, who's the franchise player, who he wanted. And he got exactly who he wanted. 
what does Brett Veach and Andy Reid want to do? They want to make sure that Mahomes stays happy. So as long as you're keeping him happy, uh, I'm happy because that's going to be more rings. That's what I want to see. Yeah. You now, know, Chris, the, the Chris I was wanting to ask you. Oh, I think, you know, I think he'll actually end up starting. I think he'll end up starting week one, to be honest with you. This guy's probably the most underrated dude in the draft. This dude is, is, is incredibly talented. I cannot wait to see him play. And I think he's going to make an explosive offense a lot better. Yes. Um, here's a question for all of us, actually. Rookie of the year, Joe Burrow, Chase Young, Hilaire, or DeAndre Swift? Who do you got? I'm going to be a homer, Chase Young. Straight up, Chase Young. Probably the most dominant dude in the draft. Generational talent. Talent. If Chase, they got the, uh, they got the right defensive coordinator. Of uh, you know, in place, I think Chase Young it could possibly be the the rookie of the year, or at least defensive player of the year in the NFC. Because right now, does anybody have faith in Joe Burrow? I haven't really seen anybody that has faith in him with that Bengals offense. He's going to be a rookie quarterback. You know how rookie quarterbacks are. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. As a matter of fact, if they had someone in front of him, he probably would be able to sit the year. But, you know, he's going to be in a tough situation. If anyone's expected to have him to throw 50 touchdowns, it's out of the gate. It's out of the question. Now here's the yeah, question. Do you think if Pat Mahomes wouldn't have sat out that year with Alex Smith, do you think he would have been as good as he is? I think Pat Mahomes would still have been good as he is with or without Alex Smith. Yeah. I, I, I think the time that he had with Alex Smith was definitely crucial to his development. I think him learning the system, learning different things like that. But I think he, he was also going to be great because he had a great dad – uh, that led him and brought him in the locker room. So he was around those types of players all the time. Uh, his questionability wasn't there. It was just getting to know the system. Andy Reid has a complex offense, and I think that's something that you have to learn. It takes a little bit of time to develop, and uh, I, I think they did the right choice there. I think, uh, I think a big thing for me, and just kind of tying up a lot of that stuff, one, I agree with Armand. I think it is Chase Young. I think we haven't even seen what he can do yet. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, two, the Pat Mahomes thing, it's, it's he understands culture, and Andy Reid understands culture and winning culture. And so to include and have that part of it in there, I, I just – I feel like – and Adam, you alluded to it earlier too with like the Green Bay thing. I, I think that is a, a new coach and kind of a new organizational philosophy that they're kind of heading toward. And it's just – it's not a good feel. It's not a good culture for right now. I just think we saw some teams that have a good established culture show that. And then we saw some teams that just had head-scratcher moves. And I think that's a big thing for me. I thought the draft itself really just showed us something. It kind of uh, accidentally showed something that I think we're going to see a lot more of in the future. Because just seeing the coaches' houses – with their families and stuff like that, that made the NFL feel not like the no fun league, but a lot like you got to see, I mean, Belichick's got his dog at the table. You got what's <laughs> going on in the background with Rabel. You Mike got Zimmer's got all of his uh, hunting yeah. animals up so on Zimmer, his not, Zimmer's lodge was scary. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you know, you got a fireside chat with the commish. I mean, I just, I thought the whole thing was great. I could see the first round that first night being done up and you would get invited and stuff like that. And then the rest of it, two, three, four, five, six, seven is going to be online. Cause it just well, they, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. They said it was the most viewed NFL draft in all three days. Like everybody it watched wild. it in three days because I think mm -hmm. it's just, it was a virtual draft and everybody loves seeing all these GMs and owners houses. And I mean, to me, yeah. it's kind of cool. I mean, Roger Goodell's basement, he was calling all yeah. the players from his basement and, and plus, it was the only sporting event on. <laughs> yeah, now, here's a surprising thing, and I was really surprised when I got this news. Uh, James Winston to the Saints on a one-year deal. Why would he go to the Saints when Drew Brees is by far going to be the number one starter? He's going to be this backup. 
That's why he signed. He's going to be the backup. Is this going to be a plan for maybe Drew Brees retiring after next year and James no, staying with No, because he only has a one-year deal. There's no guarantee Jameis is going to be there at the end of that one-year deal. He's there to back up, back up uh, Drew Brees. But that's my thing. Why would he take that and not go to a team that he knows he can start? Well, the thing about it is, who, who offered him anything? Yeah. He, he, he was out there for a long time. It was quite obviously no one really offered him anything. Of course, Tim Bay did one of them. They got Brady. So he had to go to a team that wanted him. And in the case with the Saints, he's going to be, he's going to be backing up Drew Brees. And then he, hey, he's, he's going to be fighting Tyson Hill, who signed a two-year deal, if Jameson stays on after the season for that starting job for the Saints, if Drew Brees happens to retire after the season. There's no guarantee Drew Brees can retire after the season. I can well, see him playing another year. I'm sure but, Adam would take him in Dallas over Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah, I'll take Mr. 30 for 30. <laughs> no. no, I. you know, it's interesting because to me, Jameis Winston just needs some tweaking to his game. I mean, he did well with the weapons that he had. I mean, he threw for more yards than Dak Prescott this year. You know, and I believe he had more touchdowns than Dak Prescott this year. The only downfall was his 30 interceptions that ended up screwing the Bucks more than anything. So, it's honestly, about winning. it's about what? It's about winning. Yeah, no, no, it re- have. it's about winning. It, James it, it truly is win. about winning. It truly is because I find it odd that the guy with the number one QBR rating – didn't even get asked to go to the Pro Bowl, let alone make the playoffs. They had a Pro Bowl Here's the thing that gets me, though. You go out and you sign Tyson Hill to a contract extension, and then you go out and sign Winston, but then you give Tyson Hill an additional contract. So it's like, all right, you really want Tyson Hill, but he's not good enough to be the backup right now, but maybe eventually he's going to be the man. So, I mean, that's that's the thing that kind of got me is you just extended him and then you're going to extend him one more time just so he feels comfortable. Okay, we love you, but you're not the man here, but we'll give you another extension. Yeah, man, I think, I think the Winston thing is about two things. It's about one, image fix. Like, I'm going to go learn from Sean Payton and Drew Brees and I'm going to try and show that I can be more disciplined. And then two, it's uh, you're pulling the version of what Tannehill did this year. And you're taking a year, you're sitting yourself out, basically. And we saw Bridgewater, the backer for the Saints, get in for five games this year. And, you know, Drew's not indestructible. He's our age, <laughs> some of our age, Armand. And so I think the funny part about it is I think he's setting himself up, kind of similar to what Mary Others did, like a redo. And then I don't think his I think his agent must have just said to him go do this because there are reports out there that he turned down another team for a more lucrative offer I mean we don't know that and can't prove any of that from where we're at I think it's just a real calculated thing and I think New Orleans also knows that Taysom Hill is not going to be their starting quarterback he's going to be the same thing he was this year coming in doing all kinds of crazy stuff I think they like having him I think Peyton likes that too so I that's for me that's more of the Saints thing but, yeah, when I saw that that's where he was going first, I took pause and had to think and see what I thought of it. Yeah. Now let's get to the uh, beloved Indianapolis Colts. Of course, they had that big offseason pickup with old man Rivers, and then they went out and got Michael Pittman Jr., who people believe could be a deadly weapon for Rivers. And they got the running back that I've always praised in college football, Jonathan Taylor, who I think could easily be a day-one starter. Do you guys think that that offense has become somewhat deadly, that they can put up 20, 25 points a game? Yeah, they'll definitely put up close to 25, if not go a little bit over that a game. And uh, if they don't, then uh, I blame uh, Phillip Rivers for that. Anyway, um, the Colts, to me, had a very good draft. And I believe that – with the backup that they got, even though I was not a fan of his watching them a few games in Washington with the Washington Huskies, 
he, I believe Frank Reich is the only guy who could actually semi-develop a quarterback that needs help. And so he'll learn a lot from him. And I think he could actually succeed down the road. Uh, it'll be interesting. But the uh, Colts draft, I mean, they did an excellent job at getting weapons, some defensive players, even uh, the big trade with uh, San Francisco. So look for Indianapolis to make some noise, whether it's going to the playoffs, uh, you know, winning the division or what, I have no idea. But I'm excited for them. I am. The division is weird anyway because you got Jacksonville, who I think is going for the number one draft pick. And then you have the Texans, who – we're not ever real sure who they're going to trade and what they're going to do. It's Bill O'Brien. And, <laughs> and then we have the Titans. And are they going to be able to recreate what they did last year? And I'm not buying that. And that division, to me, is wide open. I think it's the Colts to win or to lose. And I totally agree with what you said, Adam, about Reich and Eason. And I think they drafted for the future. They drafted for what they have coming. And I thought, yeah, with Pittman putting somebody finally across from T.Y. Hilton, I think they're going to have a, a pretty solid team. And the AFC, besides the top two spots, is wide open as far as I'm concerned. Well, and, and you go back to uh, this year, they're adding two more playoff teams. So yeah. I definitely think they're a playoff team caliber. Uh, so if they can stay healthy, you know, with TY and, you know, the weapons that they've added and Taylor, uh, that's, a, that's a stud. You know, they moved up to go get him. I mean, the guy had potential to be a first-round pick. You know, he was that good. The guy doesn't run for 6,000 yards, you know, in a couple seasons and not be a good enough running back. Now, I know it's the system, but, I mean, he's still a great running back. And, you know, I I don't think that uh, Hines and, you know, the other guys that they got over there, they're not as caliber as uh, what you're getting with Taylor. That guy's going to run, run, run. You could totally see a Mac-Taylor combo with Marlon Mack, who never stays healthy either, and a Mac-Taylor kind of thing that works off of that. I think that's scary. I think with the Colts quarterback situation, Easton was a, was a pretty good pick. They have Jacoby Brissett and Chad Kelly. Brissett mm-hmm. didn't really impress anything, and you know, Chad Kelly, you know, back him up. Easton has a pretty good job of going in there, being drafted in the fourth round, being a starter. Now I just That's got I just got news on my phone that Brashad Breeland has been arrested for multiple charges, including having open container and motor vehicle. Uh, well, he just signed that one year deal. So what does this do now to the Kansas City? I mean, I mean, most fans are saying, well, even if he's not on the team anymore, it's not going to be a big loss. But he did have a couple of huge plays late in the season in the post. Josh Breeland is trash. He was trash for the Redskins. He is trash. You keep him. I don't want him back. Thank you for bringing us back, Kendall Fuller, though. But Brashad Breeland has been trash. Yes, he made a play to Super Bowl. So did Timmy Smith. But Breeland is straight <laughs> trash. If Good if the uh, if the uh, Chiefs are looking for a rental, okay, for Breeland, if they kick him off. Uh, I believe his name is Fitzpatrick from the Bengals. Still has not signed, but is pretty a pretty good corner. So, well, the Chiefs, he's still available. The Chiefs drafted that safety day. out of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mean, that's true. Even he was that's seventh true. round pick. They said that he could still be a starter day one or maybe year two. He had the second I mean, fastest combine uh, out of all the other cornerbacks. So they got the second fastest. Linebacker in the second fastest uh, corner, so they're definitely going to the speed this year. I definitely think they'll be all right without breathing because they got Armani Watts coming back off of his injury mm-hmm. and Juan Thornhill. Yeah, so, I, I don't yeah. think I don't think that they're going to release Breland though. I think this is something that they kind of clear out and figure out what's going on. Yeah, I, I have a question for you guys, real quick. Okay, since the Raiders got speed in a lot of wide receivers and so did the Broncos do you guys see like in the AFC West games being like 70 to 60 yeah (laughs) because I feel like I feel like Gruden and Elway got together and said heck with defense let's just try to outscore everybody just like what the Chiefs do 
John you Elway. Know, John Elway came out and said that the AFC West opponents are chasing that Chiefs offense. So instead of going defense, these AFC West opponents are going offense to keep up with you. Because they said no matter if you draft defense, you're not going to stop that offense with Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. Yeah. You're just it doesn't. You could have the best. De- Look at 49ers, best defense in the league, and Chiefs put up 31. Yeah, 21 of it was in the last seven minutes. But that just shows you how explosive that team can – how quickly they can put up points. Especially being down by double digits in all the playoff games. Yeah. But you also have Mahomes. So, I mean, it, you can put as many wide receivers and running backs and, you know, but you're still going to have to have somebody throw it to them. Yep. And that's the be- missing piece. That's the missing piece in that AFC West thing. I agree with Adam totally. I think they're just going to run and gun. And try and stay with them. But you don't have anybody that downloads information as well as Reed and then the combo of him and Mahomes. And I, this is something that people said when the Broncos drafted Elway, you know, in 83, that everyone was going to have to deal with that for 15 years. And they did. And everyone in the NFC – or, excuse me, AFC West is going to get to deal with Mr. Mahomes for the next 15 years. Now, the, one thing- the way that it's going to be. The one thing Mahomes won't do is go to an opposing team's stadium and tell the refs to quiet the crowd down. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not all, right, man, that, all right, man, that's going to wrap it up. That was a great show today. Enjoyed talking about the NFL draft. It's always a fun time of the year, even when there's no sports going on. At least we had that to look forward to. And I believe we're all, if not – happy semi happy with our teams we know chris was happy with the third second third round Mm -hmm. raiders so i mean it was a good draft for most of the teams this year and to me it was just a fun draft to watch i really enjoyed watching it even though there wasn't a live one i mean so i agree yep all right that's going to wrap it up for us go ahead and like and subscribe on the bottom right of your screen We will have another show later this week, and we will be talking about NBA and our all-time NBA teams. Thank you.